Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss some more topic from the effective stresses. So in this lecture I will discuss effective stress in a soil mass under the hydrodynamic condition where the flow of water is not a zero, flow of water is in a steady state, quicksand condition, seepage force. So already we have discussed the effective stress in the case of coupled reaction, in the case of sur surcharge, in the case of hydrostatic condition of water means flow of water we have taken zero. So now flow of water is not a zero, flow is in a steady state. So what's happening in a soil as the water flow through the soil, it exert a drag force or a seepage force on the soil particle. And the seepage force affect the interparticle forces and hence finally affect the effective stress. When the flow is downward, the effective stress get increased as the seepage force increase the interparticle forces. On the other hand, we can say when the flow is upward, effective stress is decreased as the seepage force decrease the soil particles forces. So let's take one, uh, we will discuss one by one. So case one, we will, uh, we will discuss downward flow. Okay, so in this figure, you can, uh, the, you can see that I have mentioned a soil sample AB and length of soil sample is H. So soil uh, sample is just set up in a vertical direction, okay kept vertically, point C is at J distance from the point A, so the water level at a point A is H1, okay, so the water level of water in this soil tank is maintained by adjusting the supply on the top and the outflow at the bottom, okay, and rate of discharge is constant in this setup, okay. So uh, we have uh, to uh, in all derivation we have taken the datum as a B point or B level. Okay, so at the point B level we have taken the datum. Okay, so so we can we can calculate the how is uh, occurring in a downward flow of all those things. So total head at a point A. What we can write? So always uh, you you already know that always I told you that the total head at a point at any point is the summation of the elevation head and pressure head, right? So at a point A, you can say that we have taken the datum as a point B. So elevation head would be H and pressure head would be H1. So we can write total head H1 plus H. Similarly, we can write total head at a point B. Okay, so at the old point the A, C, B, we have uh, inserted the stand point so that we can check the what is the water level means what are the pressure head at a different points okay so at a point b we can write the pressure head and elevation head so you can see that at a point we b have we have text, uh, taken that b as a datum so the elevation head would be zero okay so what would be the pressure head so you can uh, see you can see that in the figure at a point b in a standpipe, water level is showing at this. So how we can write what the depth? So H1 plus H minus H, we can write the pressure head. So total head at point B, we can write this. So you can see that uh, total head at a point, <coughs> sorry, total head at a point A is greater than total head at a point B. Means uh, flow is always occur from high head to low head. So uh, in uh, by um, in this equation you can say you can say that that flow will occur a to b means uh, it is a example of downward flow right so head loss is h and uh, flow is occurring vertically downward we can write the hydraulic uh, gradient so head loss divided by length of soil length of soil is always uh, uh, parallel to the direction of flow so we can write i is equal to h by h so at a point a we can uh, calculate the total head so uh, sorry uh, we can calculate the uh, total stress so what we can uh, get 
so total stress is the just the weight of all uh, summation of all the material whatever the uh, above that point so at a point a there is a water of uh, h1 height so we can write h1 gamma w pore water pressure is simply the unit weight of water into the head of water so h1 gamma w so we can uh, divide these two uh, values if we can get the effective stress that is zero any doubt okay this is reciprocally we have already discussed so many thing so effective stress at a point a is zero so at a point c again uh, c is the chain distance from the a point so we can write total stress that is the you can see what are the material and the at a point c so there is a water of height h1 and there is a soil in saturated condition of a height z so you can write h1 gamma w plus z gamma saturated you can add the pore water pressure but for we have to for the calculation of pore water pressure you have to calculate the water head water depth right so what are the water head to so see at the point c is uh, stand pipe is inserted so see uh, you can uh, calculate this by matlab uh, hydraulic gradient also it means total h is head loss is occurring in the height of h so what will be the head loss will be in the z okay so you can write like this h1 plus the that is that in the water level plus z so you can reach here minus what is the head loss so we can just get in the head loss so minus h by h into z into gamma w we are just uh, uh, considering that h is head loss occurring in the capital h height of soil sample so what will be the head loss in the small z so we can write h by h into z okay so we can calculate the effective stress or h by h you can write i also so uh, you can write like this so effective stress we can get this value so you can see that z uh, gamma summers plus i z gamma w right so at point b so at point b what will the total stress so we can write like this water head and the um, so h1 gamma w plus h comma saturated because the soil is in the h height of saturated condition okay pore water pressure you can simply write so what are the total head so h1 plus h minus h this is the water head water head in shown in the stand pipe and we can calculate the effective stresses so h gamma submerged plus h gamma w so we can write uh or we can write also h gamma submerged plus i h gamma w so if you will compare from the hydrostatic condition when the flow of water was zero so we got there h gamma submerged but due to downward flow we got some extra value and we can say the effective stress increased by i h w or h gamma w so this i h gamma w is due to the downward flow because due to downward flow what what is happening so due to the downward flow uh, water their seepage force is a uh, uh, seepage force increase the inter inter particle forces and that is increase the effective stresses and this term is also called as seepage pressure okay so seepage pressure you can write like this h gamma w or i h gamma w case 2 uh, upward flow so how is occurring upward flow so due to the we are maintaining the water level and the rate of water is constant so the so you can see in this figure uh, same uh, all the condition are same but flow condition flow is changed so the water head is changed so we have maintained the due to the valve and all this thing so here the rate of discharge is constant and the water head is at the different different point at constant right so again we can calculate the total head at a point a so at a point a we can calculate the uh, pressure head that is h1 or elevation head that is h we can write total head at point b so we can write so b is the uh, 
we have taken the, again we have taken the same datum line so elevation head will be zero but pressure head we can write so at a point b you can see that uh, water head is showing so h1 plus h plus small h right so this is the total water head so we can write the total head at point b so you can see that total head at point b is greater than total head at point a so always flow occur from high head to low head so flow will occur from b to a b to a means apart from, this is the case of apart flow so you can calculate the head loss that is h we can calculate the hydraulic uh, gradient h by h so at same we will calculate the effective stress at a point a at point c at point b so we can calculate total stress for water pressure at a point c we can calculate simply we can see the same uh, things we will uh, consider here means the total head loss is occurring in the h height of sample so what will the head loss will occur in the z so we can write the water pressure so we can write like this okay similarly at a point b we can calculate the to uh, total stress we can calculate the poor water pressure we can calculate the effective stress so here you can see that we got the effective stress at point b h gamma submerged minus h gamma w h gamma dash minus i h gamma w means you will be feel we can consider the in, compare the from the hydrostatic condition so we are getting the less value of effective stress and what are the less value h gamma w or we can say i h gamma w so this value uh, this value matlab means uh, the effective stress got decreased by this value so and this is called the effect uh, seepage pressure so what is happening already we have already i told you in the beginning that uh, when the flow of uh, water is upward the effective stress got decreased because of the seepage force this decrease the interparticle forces okay so so we can say that the upward condition the effective stress got decreased so now we will discuss one question so <clears throat> water is flowing at a rate of 0.05 ml per second in the upward direction through a fine sand sample which k value is given 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 cm per second the sample thickness is 12 cm and the area of cross section is 50 cm square determine the effective pressure at the middle and the bottom section of the sample if the saturated unit weight of the sand is 19.4 kg per meter cube so in this figure so k is given so sample thickness that is called capital h is given 12 cm discharge is already given cross section area of the sample are given capital a 50 cm square and gamma saturated are given from from the darcy law we can write k is equal to k i a sorry q is equal to k i a is equal to k h by l a so we have all the value q k l or a so we can calculate the h right or is what is the h is h is the head loss or you can say the h, h is the total head loss <coughs> that we got 6 cm so the effective stress at a point b we can calculate gamma submerge h minus gamma w h so we have all these value gamma submerge so gamma submerge we can calculate the gamma saturated minus gamma w h we have 12 cm small h that is head loss we have 6 cm so we can calculate this value we get 0.528 kN per meter square for the length h2 means the at the middle the head loss will be see the total head loss occurring 6 cm in the 
12 cm so what will be the head loss for the 6 cm so it will be the half head loss because the head loss and length of soil there is a linear graph I told you hydraulic you will uh, make a graph of hydraulic gradient it is, it is a straight line it is a constant straight line right so we can get the head loss that is a h by 2 we can write also the h by h into h by 2 so we can get h by 2 so we can get 3 centimeter so at the point c or we can say at the point the middle we can calculate the effective stress that is gamma submerged into h by 2 minus gamma w h by 2 so we have the h value 12 centimeter we have the small h value to head loss that is 6 centimeter so we can put the, all these value we can get this result so we got 0 0.264 Kilton per meter square in the case of upward flow so effective stress got decreased by some value that is ih gamma w so in the case of upward flow we can write this so it is possible to reach a condition where effective stress can be zero so suppose we got that state where the effective stress is zero so by simplifying that we can write hydraulic gradient it's called to gamma summers by gamma w so at that condition where the effective stress is zero the hydraulic gradient is called a critical hydraulic gradient so at the hydraulic gradient soil such as sand loses uh, sand all its, its shear strength and it cannot support any load so this phenomena is called quick sand so what's happening in a sand or silt so sand do not have any cohesion so the shear strength of the sand or silt is directly proportional to the effective stress when effective stress is zero in the case of sand so there will be shear strength will be zero okay so we can also uh, we call a uh, quick sand condition or a soil is a is quick or a live or boiling will occur we can call a so the general uh, or famous uh, name is the quick sand condition yeah quick sand so quick sand is a not a type of sand it's a not a type of sand it's a, it's a hydraulic condition it's a just hydraulic condition where the shear strength is zero so critical hydraulic gradient it will put the gamma submerged in the uh, in the form of gamma w so we can get by simplifying we can get icr g minus 1 divided by 1 plus c where the g is the specific gravity of solid particles e is the void ratio and 1 plus c you can uh, put in the form of porosity we can get g minus 1 into 1 minus n so remember all this uh, formula this is very very small small formula but there is very useful uh, that uh, in the gate or ES uh, the objective question come from here and maybe subjective question come from here so two marks one mark question so this is very important so I will discuss some numericals on this uh, topic so or in uh, some uh, um, objective questions uh, you can see that there is a mention what is the quicksand condition so there is a uh, you can see that there is so many options so you can check there there is a just understand that quicksand is a not a type of sand it's a just hydraulic condition but the hydraulic gradient got to the reach to the critical hydraulic gradient where the if shear strength of the sand we got zero so if anyone will ask uh, that in the case of clay it's possible to uh, reach the hydraulic uh, critical hydraulic gradient no it is not possible because in the case of clay suppose we, we got the effective stress is zero but again that so uh, clay can show some shear strength because of the cohesion because you will see the formula of the shear strength that is a c plus sigma dash 10 phi means if that sigma dash is zero so shear strength is equal to the cohesion so in the clay it is not possible to get the critical hydraulic gradient right Okay, question number two. Determine the value of hydraulic gradient for a loose deposit of a sand having the void ratio 0.67 and a specific gravity 2.67. So we have to calculate the ICR. 
we have g value 2.67 we have a, a void ratio that is 0.67 so we can calculate by putting this formula we can get this value so we get the icr is equal to 1 question number 3 okay so a 1.5 meter layer of a soil is subjected to an pot seepage head of 1.95 meter what the de depth of course sand will be required above this soil to provide a factor of safety 1.5 against piping the coarse sand and the soil having a specific gravity 2.67 and the porosity 30 percent so this question we can understand by a figure so there is a soil layer uh, uh, there is a coarse sand layer so soil layer depth is given 1.5 so just note down what are the data given so h is given first process is given so we can calculate icr so we have g value or n value okay so we can calculate 1.169 so by hydraulic gradient <coughs> we can write so h by z plus 1.5 how we can write this because the head loss is mentioned and what is the hydraulic gradient head loss divided by length of length of soil sample or length of the flow of water okay so <coughs> we can write one plus uh, five meter plus z so we can write hydraulic gradient so factor of safety is given in, in the figure 1.5 so factor of safety we can write icr is equal to i so see uh, factor of safety means so what is happening when i is less than icr means uh, flow is uh, not rich at that quicksand condition okay uh, means means at that point the effective stress is not zero effective stress is greater than zero so when you will increase the i value so effective stress will decrease or at the stage where the i will be equal to icr the effective stress will be zero so we have meant we always maintain for a structure we maintain some uh, factor of safety means icr we kept greater than i value okay so we have kept some factor of safety so here in this figure in the question is saying uh, factor of safety is 1.5 meter so uh, we can write so factor of safety we can write icr by i so icr we have calculated 1.169 i value we have calculated from this so we can get this value we can get z so by solving z is 1 meter means he is asking about the coarse and in soil this, this value so what depth of coarse and so we got the coarse depth depth is z and we got the this value z is equal to 1 meter right are you getting my point we have just the calculated the icr i value and we apply the factor of safety that is icr or by i you can you can remember this formula factor of safety is always equal to the icr by i seepage force already uh, i have discussed the uh, the water flows through the soil it exerts a force or a drag force on the soil in the direction of flow in the case of isotropic soil the force is known as the drag force or seepage force and the pressure introduced in the soil is called the seepage pressure so we can write seepage pressure we can denote by j so acting in soil is created due to the flowing water through the frictional drag we can write gamma w h a so we, we have seen that the the extra pressure was coming gamma w h so by multiplying by area we can calculate the force seepage force or we can write seepage pressure so we will divide the seepage force by area so we can get gamma w h or we can uh, calculate seepage force per unit volume generally uh, we can uh, we, we we calculate seepage pressure per unit in terms of per unit volume so we can write j so j divided by capital a by l so we can put the value of j gamma w h a divided by l so we can write simply i gamma w means the seepage force per unit value i gamma w means at any time where we want to calculate the what are the 
CPH force power interval, we can just simply multiply the hydraulic gradient with the unit weight of water, right? So these are the reference we have taken. So thank you.